Hey there, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, all right, so tonight we are continuing on our ABC Stitch Along. This is the Inchworm. Uh, he's coming along well. We are well our way, well on our way to all this set, uh, finishing all the satin stitches. It's heavily satin stitched, this guy, so that's been kind of fun playing around with. And uh, yeah, next week we'll be doing the jellyfish. So, all right, you guys, let's get stitching. Okay, and just letting everyone know that we have another freebie uh, today, and it is going to be our Craft a Happy Life embroidery kit. So if you order just $15 or more during our live, uh, I will throw in one of our Craft a Happy Life embroidery kits uh, for free. You don't need a code or anything. I will just plop one in your order. So letting you know about that. Uh, it's the fun one. It's a four inch one. Uh, but yes, so that is our special for viewers, viewers tonight here. All right. And we are continuing on the satin stitch and it looks like where we left off was we put in, Ooh, let me scoot you guys in a little bit. Let's go right there. So we put in the, uh, kind of our guide posts for our satin stitch here. And now I'm going to fill it in. And this one we're kind of going, let's see. Oh yeah, we're, we're still going bottom to top. So I'm going to start at uh, this little bit and go to this uh, this edge first. And all these, all these lines are, first of all, we drew them in pencil first. Oops, you guys, I didn't do that little split. Uh, so this one's a little bit twisted. So let's, let's do that railroad thing. But that's just to be guides so uh, my lines are parallel throughout. So that is the plan with that. So now I'm shushing uh, my needle through the, the two strands. So I'm using two strands of embroidery floss here and I'm putting my needle through them, like in the middle of them. And that's called railroading. And that way, when I pull my thread through, my two individual strands are gonna lay super flat and neat next to each other, uh, which is just gonna make, give you like a much nicer, cleaner look for your satin stitch. And I didn't do that for my second, that, that first stitch that I did today. So that one got a little twisted. So if I did that for all of them, it would look fine. It'd be so subtle. Uh, you don't definitely don't need to do this. Um, but it just gives a slightly cleaner look. And there we go. All right, so I think that's all we have to do from there. Uh, John Michael's asking, who's a crafter here? Uh, Kath, do you have a hard time looking for DMC floss? So Kath, I don't look for DMC floss so much anymore because we have our own floss. So this is our, uh, this is our, um, pocket skeins embroidery floss. It's similar to, 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 um, DMC for sure. Uh, we have it in 23 colors and uh, that's basically what I've been using using here. It's still six strand embroidery floss, uh, but yeah, I know I know certain colors for sure. With with DMC can be tough to find. Uh, we were ordering it by the cone <laughs> at one point, like by the big, like two thousand I think two hundred meter cone, uh, which is crazy. Uh, we do have some of those yet. <laughs> Those are fun, but um, I haven't I haven't looked for a DMC floss in a while. And sometimes when I'm working on projects that I do need more of a range that than just my um, you know penguin and fish twenty three colors, I have so much floss just wound on bobbins, you know, like like these of just DMC and a few other brands. Um, so that's. That's um, what I use. I've been kind of using up my stash for <laughs> like a decades. 
Oh, what's the what's the craft a happy life? So that is our Robin. That is our freebie for today. So anyone that orders uh, fifteen dollars or more in the shop, I will throw in a craft a happy life uh, embroidery kit. It has all the supplies. It has everything but a scissors in there. Um, I will throw that in your order with no no um, no code needed or anything like that. So that is our kit, our free kit today for for viewers who are viewing live today all right getting that thread in the middle there i'm in between the second sort of um guide post now uh it just allows me to have to like stick I, I can tell if i'm parallel a lot better when i'm going in between these short little spaces versus like the whole length and we're definitely going to need more floss real quick here real quick here these big sand stitches do take up a lot of of thread but it's looking just really nice nice and shiny and i love the colors a little rainbow inchworm All right, one more here. Then I think we can probably get maybe one more stitch and then I'm gonna have to switch. I'm gonna have to get more um, floss right away, but we got it ready to go. We're, we're basically starting where we left off yesterday. So we're kind of in the middle, middle of the process here. Oh, thanks for the follows. All right, let's split this last, railroad this last stitch here. There we go. We're almost halfway done there. Oh, cool. Cass says I do a lot of stamped cross, uh, like cross stitch. I, I've done a snowman towel and done the long stitch. Oh, fun. So on a, so if, if I think I'm reading it right, you do, you do cross stitch, like a stamped cross stitch or a stamped, a, a stamped towel, like an embroidery towel, like, like this. And you've done the, um, this long satin stitch with that. That's right. There, there's, um, you can get stamped. That's basically like what ours is. Ours, on, on some of our newer kits, we have the pattern right on it right away. So I've, I've cleaned up, I've wound the, the rest of my uh, bobbins here. So I just had a huge mass like this uh, that I was just gonna use for this whole project. So I, I've, I'm doing like all the letters of the alphabet. Uh, I just wanted to show this because I'm putting my little garbage scraps in, in the top of the strawberry here now. I just think that's so easy and, and fun. I'm going to like leave it a little loose, but that's why I'm throwing my garbage. But I feel so organized now. It's been a little while since uh, it wasn't a crazy, crazy mess in this bin. But yeah, so let's get two more strands here. My next two strands. Uh oh, there we go. Like that got stuck. It's never gotten stuck before, but it sucked up some of my fabric edge thread. Oh, stamped crossed on a um, counted cross stitch pattern. Oh, fun. We've been talking about cross stitch here lately. I, I do want to do some patterns yet for that. I have not gotten to that yet, though. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Adrian and Kathy. Thanks for hopping in tonight. come back here you guys I've been feeling like super clumsy today but we're still gonna get we're still gonna get a good satin stitch going here I think so the next color is purple so we'll we'll do the purple uh, here as well it might be our dark purple we'll see what we have more of okay Good to go. Let's weave in this end and we'll continue where we left off. One. So I don't usually start with the knot, so I'm, I'm weaving in the ends here. Oh, Elizabeth, thanks for the share. I appreciate that, you guys. Okay. 
Okay. Still pretty excited for next week. Next week is the um, jellyfish. Let's see where that went. Ooh, I almost dropped this on the floor too. So here's the here's the jellyfish. So this is what we'll be doing next week. Our cute little J jellyfish. Um, and then uh, the week after that, we'll we'll be stitching our embroidery of the month. So again, here's our embroidery of the month for this month. Our cute little lilac with the squirrel. Um, here's here's the kit again. All the stuffs in there. So these are pre-printed. Uh, versus like what we did here. This was the iron-on pattern, the iron-on um, sheet. So you don't have to, don't have to do that iron-on with with our newer kits. But yeah, I'm excited for the jellyfish. That's one of my favorites. It's just so happy. They're all so happy. Happy animals. Oh, this one was a little further apart or further away than the, the last stitch, so I might actually stick another stitch in between. It's not looking so bad, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to add add one more to fill in this gap a little bit. All right, let's cut on through that stitch again. So I'm using, just to uh, reiterate again, I'm using two strands and I am r putting my needle, like I'm I'm splitting through the two threads, like I, so I have a thread on either side of my needle, uh, like so, and that's just to have, um, to basically get rid of all the twists as I'm stitching. So I'm gonna put the needle into the fabric on the other side and that thread is on either side. And then I can pull all the way through, and by the time I get it all pulled, those two strands should be laying right next to each other. Like, they shouldn't be all twisted up. So it'll actually look as if I'm stitching with just one strand, which is how you can get the, like, the best, shiniest, prettiest um, satin stitch. Like, with just the one strand. So we're, we're cheating by doing that little railroading. And it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes I still get a little twist. But... So far, it's worked pretty well, I think. Yeah, I'm hoping we can finish up all this blue and the purple here. And then Friday, tomorrow, we'll stitch the outline. The outline is with, uh, with the green. So here's, here's our dude right here. So we'll do purple next. And uh, this is the purple, but I do have another purple, which I have more of. And, and I mean, I guess I have, I guess I have a decent amount of both of these. So we can just choose, choose which purple we want to use. I did use the darker blue than, than the original, uh, just cause I had more of it. I'm trying to, I started off with, uh, just, just, um, one pack of my, um, every color of my pocket skeins embroidery floss and I want to see how far it can take me through this project even though we're not doing it exactly like every every letter of the alphabet we're not doing them exactly like the originals we're playing around with them a little bit more but I'm just curious how far in this project I can get without needing more more floss um, and these skeins are actually I, I call them like basically half skeins. They're only four meters long, so they're just perfect for like small little projects like this. Um, so they're not like, you know, a DMC skein is, is eight meters typically. Um, so ours are little half skeins and it's just kind of fun. We'll see how far they get us. All right, I think I can hop to the next place. So just two more little sections to go. I did keep my pencil out this time, so we'll draw in the segments for the next bit. Oh, I got this away knot that I need to tuck into yet. Actually, I actually might need a little bit more floss to finish this. I 
Oh my gosh, you guys, it was a wildlife bonanza here this morning. <laughs> John like yelled from from downstairs, like, come down, but then like, come down really quietly. And like, he just yelled up here and I'm like coming, I'm squeaking down the stairs. And he's like, be quiet, with just like the squeaking of the floor. I'm like, what? And uh, we had in the city, <laughs> you know, I'm just outside of a major city. I'm just outside of Minneapolis. Like, I'm part of Minneapolis. Um, but we had, in our little city garden, uh, we had two deer in our yard this morning. <laughs> and I think they were two yearlings, because they did not look like they knew what the heck they were doing. Um, and, like, our neighbors our back neighbors, they're painting their house. So like these painters were there and you could like, they were surprised all of a sudden, obviously because they saw these deer too. And they were getting their phones out and taking pictures of these deer. But we had like freaking real life deer in our backyard. That's never, ever happened. Uh, happened here before, um, since we've been here. So man, we were getting excited about seeing those foxes last year, which we haven't seen this year yet, which is a bummer. So maybe we'll see the foxes yet. Uh, but dang, two giant freaking deer in our backyard. And we're on a, like a literal, like, we're on like, I think our whole property is like an eighth of an acre. It's like our one and a half story house with a little yard in back. And it was, they were in that little yard. I mean, there's, a, we're surrounded by highways. <laughs> it's just crazy. So I don't know where they were going, but they didn't know where to go when they saw those painters and they ended up going into the backyard or in um, our neighbor's backyard, like through the lilacs and then to the neighbors. And uh, um, John said he saw them later um, in the yard again, but like, what? It's crazy. Oh no, Good Vibe says, I hit a deer last week and totaled my car. Plus our AC went out the next day. Oh no, <laughs> that is a bad week. Ugh. Yeah, that, well, and that's the thing. It's, it can be super dangerous driving. So uh, now with all the deer, with all the yearlings out, because, you know, the yearlings get kind of, I don't know, booted uh, for the new fawns. And... Uh, they don't know what they're doing yet, so they just run across the roads and, and all that. Like, I didn't know. Like, I think these were, they, they looked young. They had to be little yearlings. Um, but they there was two of them together and uh, just kind of kind of um, stayed in the shade a little bit. And then, uh, you know, until the, the painters started, started like, noted, until they, they noticed the painters in my neighbor's backyard and the painters noticed them, then they kind of got a little squirrely and, and came out into the sun and um, didn't quite know where to go. And they went up our driveway just a hair and then, then went over to the neighbors. Um, but then, yeah, John said he saw them later. So they must've just hung out at the neighbors, but they were eating our hostas. <laughs> they were just super chill for a few minutes till, till the painters came. And, uh, but yeah, they can be super dangerous this year. That's always like, I mean, we just drove to my parents' house and, you know, there's, dead deer all over the highway which is you know super scary i'm always always in wisconsin and minnesota looking looking keeping my eyes open to the edges just to watch out for deer for sure oh good vibe says yes it was on the highway one ran and i looked back and it looked forward and it was just he was just standing there Ugh, that's scary my brother um gosh this is probably at least eight years ago now, but he, um, hit a car or a car hit a deer or a deer hit him, <laughs> uh, on the highway too. And it, man, yeah, it just takes out. It just, it just, it's, they're like huge. They just can take out a vehicle and yeah, they just like stop. They just stop and you know, they're just there all of a sudden, like you, you can't react really. It's just crazy. Well, I'm glad you're okay, but that sucks about the car. Yeah, that's that's no fun. Ugh, God. All right, you guys, we got this blue done. Let's pick our purple. So, the original purple I did this lighter, this lighter purple, but I'm kind of into like these, 
you know, we did this dark blue here. I kind of want to do the dark blue. We did a little brighter orange, or I keep saying blue, purple, the dark purple. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the dark purple, and I have a little bit more of that. And, ooh, I might have some spare purple in my little stash here. Ooh, and it looks like I do. Okay, good. good. So this is a good length. Uh, I have a, I wound all the stuff on the bobbins, but I still have like the parts that I used a little bit of. So my cloud of floss is is much smaller now. Hey Christy, hey Debbie, thanks for hopping in. All right, but I'm still using two strands, so um, I'm going to. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't use this because I'm going to have to. Let's see, I think this is going to take at least two big strands again and this is kind of smaller and it has three you know what i think i'm going to cut a fresh piece just because i know i'm going to use up a lot so let's just let's just get a fresh piece off the bobbin okay so i'm getting about a hefty 24 inches i think i'm getting maybe a little bit more than that actually i'm going to even get a little bit more there we go Ooh, should i switch i gotta switch scissors again let's switch to the Let's do the straight purple. So we're using purple now. <laughs> All right. Ooh, and this is a good time to remind you guys that uh, $15 or more uh, spent in the shop during our live at Penguin and Fish. And I will throw in a Craft a Happy Life kit for free. Uh, there's no code necessary or anything, just um, $15 and I will throw one in. I'm just gonna look at the, the times um, that people ordered and if it's during this time during the live I will throw in throw in one of those kits for you all right let's oh this feels funny eh, no it's fine I'm gonna get two strands here again oh and I'm kind of jumping ahead let's get our let's get our guidelines on here first so I'm gonna grab my pencil let's put our thread together here quick though Gosh, I can't pick it up. All right. Okay, so I'm going to draw my little guideposts on here again. Um, and that's just, again, helping me to keep my lines, my stitches super parallel to each other. Uh, so they're all going in one direction. And I've been, uh, you can tell that each individual chunk, each individual color is going, the stitches are going in a different direction. I'm kind of going in the direction of the worm. So I'm going like parallel to where he's going. So I think it's kind of, we're kind of horizontal here, I think. Let's just go like maybe a little shy of horizontal. So I'm going to go like this, I think. There, so I'm gonna just draw these lines in with, with pencil. Let's just, I'm gonna just keep having it. And uh, I could use a ruler, but uh, again, my goal is just to have a bunch of parallel lines here in like these little segments that'll be easier for me to fill in um, from one, one to the next. All right, those all look parallel enough. Cool. So now I'm going to stitch over those first and then uh, I will um, fill it all in. So these are, again, my guideposts just so I can keep these as parallel, keep everything parallel as possible. And I'm going to start with an away knot again. Uh, an away knot is a way to reserve a little piece of floss at the beginning of when you stitch. Um, instead of tying a knot to start, it's so I can weave in the the um, um, end later so I don't have any knots on the back. So to start to do that away knot we actually do have to start with a knot. But it's a temporary knot. We'll be snipping it off. And let's grab my needle. Okay. So, how did we do this again? Let's start Let's start here on the on the top and we'll go this way and then I'll fill it in back that way. Okay. So, this is my first stitch I'm going to make is as I'm I'm always going to start on this side and I'll end up on this side. So, I'm going to actually start right here at our first little um 
guidepost, but I'm going to start like four inches away. So this is this is my thread that I'm reserving. So there's my, my little knot, and now I'm going to come up just in the outside of my line, so I'm actually covering up the line with my stitching. Oh, that feels funny. Oh, I got one of these little knots. Okay, so you guys, uh, this is such a common knot in, in embroidery. It is that loopy little stupid butt of a knot. <laughs> uh, this happens all the time. It just happens like when your thread twists around itself and, and tightens. So you have like a little, a little loop. Uh, the easiest way I found to get rid of them is to just stick your needle right in the loop. It doesn't matter what direction, but I'm sticking, sticking the needle in the loop. Sometimes you can just lift up, um, and that loop, oh, it's not happening here. So, uh, what, what we're trying to do is get that knot to go up to the needle. So if I pull on one of these threads, either this one or this one, one of them will make the loop or the, the knot go up to the needle. So it wasn't that first one. So I'm going to pull on the second one and there we go there. It's like a slip knot. So that pulled all the way up to my needle there. And now I can pull the needle out and I can just pull the two strand strands and it'll just pop out. So it's just basically, like I said, a, a little slip knot, but they're annoying. And if you've embroidered, you've probably come up with, um, those knots before. It's annoying, <laughs> but that's, that's the easiest way to just stick your needle in there. But all right, I am going to do that method where I uh, called railroading, where I put my needle through like in the middle of the two threads. So there's one on either side of my needle and then pull through. And that way I will have just two strands that lay super flat next to each other instead of twisting up, which will give us that nice um, satin stitch where all the threads lay nicely next to each other. That's the goal at least. And I'm just going on my guide post lines that we just drew in here. And then I'll come back and um, come back and fill it in. A little extra step, putting my needle in the middle there, but we've done it for all of these and they are all looking just super shiny and and um, pretty like the more your stitches can lay next to each other uh, parallel without any twists, the shinier your satin stitch is going to look when it hits the light. So you can totally do a satin stitch with more strands and without doing this, like they can all twist up on each other, but it's just the light isn't going to hit it quite the same. And, um, it's just a little teeny detail that I'm kind of digging right now. Just having all, all these lines, all these threads line up a little bit more. Hey, Leticia. Thanks again, everyone for hopping in today for the live. Um, if you're new, I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 PM central time. And I'm here for about an hour. And lately, We've been doing uh, um, some freebies during the live, and uh, tonight's freebie is the Craft a Happy Life uh, embroidery kit. So um, any order of $15 or more in the shop, and I will throw one of these in for free into your order, and uh, there's no code necessary or anything. Um, I will just manually like see who ordered during this time during the live and throw one in. Oh gosh. And you guys, so that wasn't the only <laughs> wildlife from this morning. I hope the second thing doesn't become a whole ordeal, but, um, so after the deer, all of a sudden I hear like, like our house is shaking a little bit in the living room. I'm like, what the heck is that? And, uh, um, then I'm like, oh, it's our, 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 um, like fireplace is like shaking and making noise. Like, oh my God. And it, so I'm like, oh, I bet you I know what this is. And I went outside and sure enough, there was a woodpecker 
like pecking at the me- metallic top of our fireplace. Like we have one of those inserts, so it's a gas fireplace, and it was pecking at the top, like one of these um, woodpeckers with the little red red heads. I don't I don't know what kind it is. But the reason I knew what it was right away is because, oh, I bet you it's the same one. We saw um, we, when my um, brother and uh, his girlfriend in here were, were here last weekend, uh, we went for a walk and uh, we were looking at just like the birds and I saw this woodpecker, like it's about this big. It's not like the smallest bird in the world. And uh, it was on a neighbor's house, just like, singing like it made a really pretty pretty um pretty it had a pretty song uh but it it was on top of his like metal little uh, um fireplace insert thing like just on the on the roof like the highest point it could get on the roof right and i'm like oh my gosh that's weird he's on the little metal bit i haven't seen that before and then sure enough on ours this morning but dang it was like rattling the whole whole house over there it's crazy this is loud so the deer and then that loud house shaking woodpecker man so maybe tomorrow we'll see our cute little foxes that we did last year that'd be fun i haven't checked out our hostas yet because uh that's that's what it was. Um, they were definitely eating the hostas and maybe the fern. Oh, T Bird says it probably saw its reflection, thinking it was another bird being territorial. Oh, I bet you you are a hundred percent correct. Oh my gosh, I bet you you're totally right, because it was being loud. You know, loud as if in like warning or you know, yelling. <laughs> so that could totally be true. Oh my gosh. Silly bird. So we'll see if he comes back, but I bet you it's that same one that was at the other house too. So he's just chilling in the neighborhood. Okay, well that would be better at least because we're like, oh my gosh, if he's, is he building a nest up there? Because um, that'd be annoying to just like all summer hear, <laughs> hear him clanging at our, at our fireplace. But you're right, he probably just saw his reflection and freaked out. <laughs> okay, I like that idea. Oh, Caitlin says I've got a woodpecker that is... Oh, he's in your pecan tree. Oh, you love him. Oh, that's nice. He's definitely beautiful, for sure. Um, but man, that was that was some rattling that he, he did, for sure. And speaking of pecans... How do people say pecans? I say pecan, uh, but there's pecan and uh, um, pecan. I don't even know how I'd, you'd have to get creative on writing how, how you'd even like write that so I know what you mean, but man, I don't know. I say pecan, like pecan pie. Okay, Lynn says, I also have a herd of deer that lives down in the creek behind me. Oh, fun! And they come up to the fields every day and night. Oh, that's super sweet. Bunnies and more cardinals than I've ever seen anywhere. Oh, I love cardinals. They're a favorite for sure. And my mama finch laid eggs in my outdoor trash can. Oh, no! On my porch of all places. Oh, and the baby's hatched today. Oh, fun! That's another favorite. Little finch little goldfinches and I like the black cap chickadees. I think that's one of my favorite. Oh, uh, Lil Brittany says, my grandma says, Pekin. Oh, Pekin. Pekin. Pecan. 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 <laughs> I haven't heard it that way. That's pretty close to, to the way that I say it though. Oh, uh, like, whenever I hear anyone else say it, it's always, like, pecan or pe- pecan. Oh, Aussie pronunciation, Nolene says pecan. Oh, Catherine says pecan. Pecan. I think that's pecan. 
think that's how my in-laws say it. I'm always just, they're like, pecan pie, and I'm like, pecan pie! <laughs> so, oh, pecan, t Bird says pecan. Oh, Good Vibe says we have two, two mastiffs and a huge hosta garden. The deer pass, but don't mess with anything. Oh, nice. So, the mastiffs, uh, take care of the deer. The deer and versus hosta situation. Caitlin says, I'm in the middle of active farmland, lol, wildlife always. Ugh, that's so nice. Yeah, that's what, so a surprise, because I'm, I'm, like, you know, basically in the city. I mean, I'm not, like, by the skyscrapers, I'm just on the other side of the highway, but there's, there's highway everywhere, and I would call it city, like, small little city houses next to each other. Um, so that was a surprise this morning. Like, real life deer. I wonder where they ended up. Maybe we'll see them tomorrow. Maybe they're just gonna chill here all summer. God, I don't know. Aubrey says, I see. Pecan, pecan. how I say pecan that sounds delicious when's the last time I've had a pecan pie gosh it's, it kind of hurts my teeth thinking about it it's they're so sweet but yum probably Thanksgiving actually I don't know when else I would have had that Oh, pecan. Oh, pecan, like, like, like can. I see, Noeline. If any of you are, are wondering who I'm commenting to, I'm, I'm live on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and, um, and TikTok. All right, I think I get one more stitch in here. So I'm, I'm responding to the comments in all the places. Oh, less than the weekend. Oh, you're about 10 minutes from the mid-Ohio racetrack and hear the cars. Oh, gosh, I bet you that's super loud. All right, we're definitely going to need more thread. All right, so let's weave it in. But, hey, we got um, over halfway done with just that one strand, so I feel good about that. Okay, let's weave in the end. Oh gosh, I told you guys the other day, I, I got my second uh, Chunky Boy. <laughs> Those uh, crochet, uh, um, ergonomic crochet hook handles. And I haven't tried it yet. I've been, uh, um, I've just been busy catching up. So I don't know, maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll try it out and, and do a little bit of it. It's pretty much the same as the large or the uh, medium size one. I got a different color, um, but the, it's slightly smaller and the hole is a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm gonna try and use it with my teeny, teeny, tiny crochet hook, my little tiny metal crochet hook that I use to like crochet tiny doilies. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited to give that a go. So I'll do a little demo or testing out of that, uh, hopefully tomorrow. And then I'll show you guys here too. But it's so fun getting goodies in the mail like that. But like, yeah, between between that, I it makes me want to like work on that doily, that which is my emergency craft project. Um, so now I kind of want to not have it be my emergency craft project anymore. I just want to like work on it. <laughs> uh, and so between that and uh, like, I've just been wanting to work on some tatting again. Like I just, I don't know, I'm kind of itching to do both those things. But I don't know, maybe I need to look around and see all the projects I gotta finish up yet. Time for like a reassessment of unfinished projects, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. But but uh, that crochet and the um, tatting, they're rising to the top again. I always, I always feel like, you know, I have an idea in my head of like, oh, it'd be fun to work on something or whatever. And uh, eventually it like boils to the top and then I just have to do it. And, and, I'm, and those are both boiling 
they're they're getting they're getting further to the top. They're starting to boil. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to get those out. We do have a couple of free weeks at the end of the month, so maybe we'll have to do some crochet and tatting um, at the end of June. Ugh, that sounds relaxing. <laughs> Because I think just because my mom was tatting, um, did some really beautiful tatting when I was there this last week and when I was visiting them this last week and ugh, now I just want to tat stuff. Alright, we're getting there. How are we doing on time? Oh man, it's already 9-11. Um, so... Well, we might have some time to get going on the outline. So after I do the purple here, I want to start the uh, the green outline will be next. So, man, that would be awesome if we could get a little bit of that done tonight yet, too. Because then we have a little head start for tomorrow. I mean, it would be awesome to actually... Oh, gosh, look how I'm veering off here. Um, it'd be great to finish this tomorrow. I, that's, like, wishful thinking, but um, I might try. Uh, so, all right, so you can kind of see here that I'm, I'm veering away from parallel. So these are my, my lines, my guideposts that I did parallel, and I'm kind of veering a little bit. I'm, I'm a little angled here, so I could either pick that out, but what I'm going to do instead is just, I'm going to go a little further apart in my stitches on the bottom and a little closer together on top, and it'll just correct itself by the time I get to this guidepost. And then I'll be going from here to there, um, working on my parallelness again. So it's only going to be weird in this one spot. And you're not going to notice because I'm going to just um, be parallel here again. So that's another reason to have, like, guideposts beforehand. Because I could have just kept going. Like, I could have just kept veering if I didn't, didn't have those guideposts to keep me in check. So I'm going to go a little bit further at the bottom. Maybe not that far. So, like, I don't know, two threads over or so. So it does look like there's a little gap there, but it'll the other threads will push against that and will end up being good. So then this this side I'm gonna go right up against my last stitches there, and already it's starting to correct itself. So if I do that like one more time, I think it'll feel like we're parallel again. And then I'll just stuff another, there we go. And I'm going to stuff one more stitch in there. And then those big gaps down here won't feel so big because um, these stitches will be pushing against it. But yeah, definitely why I like the guide posts. Abrio, Abri Outlaw says it is 10, 11 for me. Okay, so you're an hour, hour later. Uh, for me, and I have to go to North Carolina tomorrow at 9 a.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That'll be, uh, for me, that'd be a big trip. For, uh, hopefully for fun. Sounds like it, um, it'd be nice and warm and comfy there. It was kind of toasty today. It, you know, it's been like, I don't know. It's been confusing. <laughs> That's what it's been. That's what our weather has been. It's been confusing. Like you're warm, but then at the same time, there's like maybe a little cool breeze or it's cool, but there's a little like warm breeze. So I don't know. I just don't know what to wear. And ugh, I don't know. Oh, Noeline, we could do that too. Noeline says, have you any free motion quilting that you need to do? I do. So, uh, yeah, I could, uh, I have the giraffe to free motion quilt. Yeah, maybe that's what we can do in, in the free week. We can kind of catch up on, we could maybe even start the, um, we could catch up on some free motion quilting for, for this project. Cause you know, we'll have this guy and the jellyfish too by then, hopefully. Uh, and then we could actually start assembling the quilt using the quilt as you go method a little bit. But yeah, we could free motion that and do that. That'd be good. Uh, I do have uh, two quilts to free motion quilt. Uh, one needs a back. So actually three, but one of them needs a back. So he's not done. Um, but um, I have 
the triangle tango one, but that one I wanted to like draw, like sketch out a whole idea for the back. So that one I'm not quite ready to do. And the other one I need to do is the I love home quilt, but I kind of, I left that at my parents' house. So that one I'll probably do there. Um, but yeah, I should draw out what I want to do on that for free motion quilting on the triangle tango quilt. Get some of those quilts done out the door. I'm almost done with the, uh, the um, granny square quilt. So I'll have to, I'll just share that later when we get this guy done. Oh, good vibe says uh, OMG North Carolina. So jelly, I had to cancel my vacation there. Oh, because of the car. Oh no. Oh boo. That's so sad. Ooh, you're gonna. Aubrey Outlaw says, I'm going to go watch my uncle in the D2 College World Series. Holy cow, that's amazing. Yeah, I hope you have an awesome time. That's exciting. All right, let's sniff this. Oh my gosh, you guys. And I must have some allergies because my eyeballs just started itching and running just now too. So <laughs> my voice hasn't gone out this today yet. <laughs> like it has the last two days. It just like went like full dry the last couple days. Um, and I think it's allergies, and now, now my eyes are scratchy and running, so. <laughs> it, it was about this, this time last, the last two nights, too, so, man, I just, I don't know, I'm sitting here, and the allergies might just kick in. Actually, you know what? The air conditioner blows right on me here. I wonder if that's, but we just changed the filter on that. I don't know. We have a guy coming, coming next week, um, not next week, later in the month, and I don't know if it's a guy, but we have uh, furnace people coming and theoretically gonna put some new filters and stuff on there, so maybe that maybe that's the problem, actually. <laughs> we'll see. Can you show how the ties turn on the granny square? For sure, Linda. So I, I haven't washed it yet. Um, I will show you guys tomorrow. I'll, um, it's still packed from being gone, um, but I will break that out tomorrow. And like towards the end of tomorrow, I'll, um, I'll sh uh, show it, show the progress. I think I have like three more ties to do on it. And I wanted to film, film that just like how I do the ties. And then I wanted to show the ties uh, before washing and after because after they like scrunch up into a, like a cute little wool ball and I think it's so cute so um, I'll, have to, I'll have to do a video on that as well. All right we have a little time left so I want to get going I just want to get started at least on our uh, the outline on this and it, so the original was done with this dark green but I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting a little low on that so I have I have two other greens, and I think this one's a little light, uh, so I think I might go with this one. This actually looks like it might be kind of, it's it's close enough to this, and I think it actually might be bright, really bright and fun with, um, with this guy. So we're going to use this, and I don't think I have, oh, maybe we do. Is this the same color? Yeah, okay, so I might have some scrap that I can start with. Ooh, good, this is nice and long. Good. So I can use up part of the cloud here. <laughs> The floss cloud. Ooh, and it's already three strands. So, okay, I'm going to be switching to three strands now. Uh, that's kind of my go-to, at least on this project, for outlines. Uh, the only reason I was using two strands is so I could get that, like, one strand effect uh, by doing that railroad. So I could have, like, one, like a bunch of one single strands next to each other um, for the satin stitch. So that's why I did just the two strands. But now I'm going to jump back to three strands because it just makes a thicker line and this is great I already have three strands ready to go excellent so I don't even have to split any threads this is leftover excellent so let's thread this and I'm going to just I think weave in the backs of these stitches and then start a back stitch around here uh, and we'll do that for like the 10 minutes or so that we have left so ideally we'd finish this tomorrow um, I didn't think that was very likely, but feeling good now. I mean, 10 minutes of backstitching, we should get pretty pretty far on this, I think. All right, so there we go. We even in the end, and I think we will just kind of like start here and go around this way. Let's 
let's go right there. So this will be a little bit lighter than what I've done in the past, this, this green, but I think it'll be pretty. So here's why I, I'm doing the back stitch uh, second, or like after the satin stitches. It's so I can cover up like all these little satin stitch edges with, with um, the back stitch, just to give it like a little cleaned up look. So I'll be going over all those, those edges. Sometimes I don't always do that. Like, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll be able to see the edges here. I'm not going to go over those edges with a back stitch, but I think just on the edge here, it'll be nice. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, he's starting to come together. I love the little, little rainbow. Oh, Aubrey, that's awesome. Aubrey says you're teaching me so much on how uh, you thread a needle. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't go over that tonight. So I, I love that pinch method of threading a needle. And we can go over it again. Let's just do it again right now. Uh, otherwise, I use a needle threader. So uh, first thing I like to do, I mean, these these sometimes I can get away with it. But first of all, I, I like to cut my strands fresh because then it's just a little, we got a much cleaner edge there. Uh, but what I like to do is I, instead of, you know, I, I, I don't ever like lick my thread and I'm never like going like far away and trying to get it in. That's like an impossibility. <laughs> uh, so I like just pulling, let's see if I can do it on the side because my nails are getting, well, well, we'll try it here because my nails are getting a little long. So they're, it's a little weird, but I, I pull it down into my, my fingers like so, so that I can make like this, this pinching motion. So uh, um, that pinch motion is like flattening the ends and it's also like kind of holding them in place. So uh, I've, I squish them a couple times and then I squish them so I can't see the thread at all. And then I slowly unpinch and then the moment I can see the thread, like here you can see like a tiny bit of green right there. The moment I see the thread, I lay my needle on top. So I, I can see the eye of the needle. I just kind of push that down over the top. And then I can unpinch a little bit more, which pushes it through a little bit. So I can see it like that. And then I just kind of grab, grab those ends. And I like that. Uh, um, there's another way that I know people like doing it. They, they kind of come up like this and like squish, you know, squish it around their needle. And then that's how they get kind of in that pinch position. So they'll like pull like that and then then go through. But I don't like that as much because then you're doubling up the thread. So now I have like six strands that I'm trying to stuff through. Whereas this way, if I just pull it down to that pinch position and then like the moment I unpinch, like right when I see the thread, I just lay my needle on top. Um, oops, didn't get it quite there. There we go. Um, that way, I'm only putting three strands through, so it should be a little bit easier. So that's that's the pinch method. That's the way I like using. Otherwise, I like using a little needle threader. These are our needle threaders. Um, to use a needle threader, you have this kind of little diamond diamond uh, shaped like wire there, and that's much easier to just get through the needle like like so because it stays in spot. It doesn't like bend and flop like like floss so I can get it through the needle and then you just let it let the needle dangle there and then it has like this diamond which you know is is big bigger than the eye of a needle and it's much easier to stick the thread through that so you're basically threading that diamond and then you just slide the needle back over the top and so that's that's you know if I'm in a pinch if I if it's being tricky then I get the needle threader out but yeah so by that pinch method that always works well. I, I, I love that method. Ooh, Anne says this might look cute with whipped back stitches. Ugh, it totally would. Ooh, that might be, might be fun to try. It could be fun, like, with different color for a different color for the whip. Ooh, we, we might have to go around and do that again, because why not? I love that whipped, whipped back stitch. Yeah, I like that idea. Oh, 
All right, you guys, I will be working on this for five more minutes or so, but I'm, I'm really happy that we got to like some, some of this outline stitching. I wasn't really expecting that tonight. So all the sand stitch is done, except for the letters. We haven't done the letters yet. That'll, we'll probably do that sand stitch too, just to like keep, you know, keep the vibe going, I guess. And uh, yeah, so five more minutes or so. So if you want that free uh, Craft a Happy Life kit uh, to be put in your order, um, you got like five or so more minutes. I will let it go over a couple minutes uh, in case you have it in your cart. But yeah, so any order of $15 or more in the shop and I will throw in that embroidery kit, the Craft a Happy Life embroidery kit for free. Um, there's no code necessary or anything. I'm just going to look at, you know, the, the timestamp on the orders and I'll just, whoever ordered during this live or just right after, I will throw one in for you. Uh, what time, I, time I, am I going live tomorrow? I definitely want to be there. Oh, thanks so much, Aubrey. I am live at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I think you said it was 10 by you, so it would be 9.30 uh, your time. Um, so 8.30 Central. And um, I'm here Monday through Friday at 8.30, 8.30 to 9.30 Central Time. Every once in a while, I'll pop in for a Saturday, like a long live during, like a several hour live during the day. Um, but I have family coming again this this weekend, so it won't be this weekend, but I don't know. I'm kind of itching to do, do another Saturday. Saturday something. We'll stitch on something. I don't know what. So I'll have to plan for something. That'd be fun though. All right, I'm really liking this green. I do like it with that dark green, um, like how the original one was, but like I said, I'm kind of getting a little low on that. So popping in this, this um, brighter, lighter green, kind of like it. Ooh, thanks for the follow. I do like that whipped back stitch idea, Anne. So we might have to come back and, and do that too. If we don't finish this on uh, tomorrow, which I kind of still suspect we might not finish it, because you know, satin stitch that that'll be, take some time. So if we don't finish, we'll try and finish when we get done with the um, jellyfish, which is next week's. Uh, so here's again next week's. ABC stitch along. So we're doing the stitch along the first and second weeks of the month. Uh, then we switch to the embroidery of the month and some other other projects. But uh, the jellyfish will be next week, and then uh, um, next month will um, H I J K and L. So the koala, which we've done here before, but I like it. The koala and the lion are next week, or not not next week, next month. So that's the ABC Stitch Along project that we're working on this year. I'm happy with our progress on that so far. I think it was talking about something else. Oh yeah, uh, when we finish, when we finish the jellyfish, which I suspect won't take all week. I feel like I'm not getting in the hole there. Okay, uh, then then we can come back to this guy and finish him up, and maybe maybe add that extra like whipped back stitch. We're doing just a plain back stitch now, but to do a whipped back stitch, you you go around and around your stitches, your back stitch with with another piece of thread and it can be a different color and I think it'd just be really cute. It, it actually looks like it makes it look like you got like kitchen twine or something just laying right on the surface is kind of fun. Oh, you got so many unfinished cross stitch projects. Uh, oh, you do this kind of stitch on, on your quilt. Oh, that's awesome, Kath. Yeah, I'll have to bring that quilt out too. I just haven't unpacked all the, all that stuff from being gone yet. The quilt's, it's right behind me. It's just got a bunch of other stuff stacked on it. So we'll have to, I'll have to get all that out. And definitely want to show you guys the granny square quilt where I'm at with it. I'll just have to do some videos tomorrow, I think. All right, I might just go till, I mean, it's 9.30 now, but I might just go till I'm done with this thread. 
which shouldn't take more than a, a few more minutes. So uh, that means you got a couple more minutes <laughs> if you wanted to get that Craft Abbey Life kit um, in your order. So yeah, because I think I'm just going to go until this thread's done. That'll help us tomorrow, too, because we'll have a little bit more done. And I'm realizing that, oh, yeah, going in and out of, of all this is actually kind of a, like a lot of surface area for the backstitch. So this backstitch might actually take a little bit longer than I was expecting. But it's looking cute so far. Oh, Robin, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Robin ordered. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'll get those orders out um, this week yet, too. For sure. Oh, I love doing a backstitch, but man, since we've started doing that whipped backstitch, it is really fun to kind of go back and add that little extra bonus to to the backstitch. Okay, we're almost, we're getting there. So yeah, so then tomorrow on this, I want to finish up the whole inchworm first. So we'll finish the outline and then do his little face there. Uh, his face is, I think, also going to be just a backstitch. And then I'd like to try and see if I can crank out that the eyes yet, although that doesn't seem... <laughs> that seems highly unlikely that we'll finish all that too, but... Uh, we'll get as far as we can, and then when we're done with the jellyfish next week, we'll finish it up, and then um, also maybe add that whipped part to this back stitch. But yeah, and then I, I want to quilt these yet, too. So I didn't really share that yet, working on this project. So we're, we're turning this into a quilt, uh, and we're going to sell the quilts and the at, like, at an auction when we're done, uh, basically, and uh, the money from that is going to go to the Minneapolis Crisis Center here, or Crisis Nursery, and uh, so we're making this into a quilt, ultimately, and we're using the quilt as you go process, which means that we're actually sewing um, this to a back fabric and a batting while it's still just small like this and then so we have like basically we'll have a bunch of basically mini quilts and then we'll be um, sewing all those mini quilts together in this process called the quilt as you go process there's a few different ways of doing that but uh, we'll be we'll be digging into that for sure more this year but I just want to show you quick we're almost done here I'll weave in this end and then I'll show you like where we're at with the quilt as you go process I think I got maybe three more stitches tops. Let's see. Oh, Aubrey says, I wish I could order, but I'm not going to be here to receive it. Oh, yeah, because you'll be out of town. Um, I am here. Uh, well, we've been doing a lot of giveaways or freebies lately, just as bonus items um, for watching live, um, just because you guys are awesome for hanging out with me here. And and uh that's the way i can give give something back to you guys so we'll we'll be doing more too for sure all right i think i'm gonna weave this in oh shoot i felt myself do that so i i accidentally unthreaded my needle so i'm gonna thread this up again because i want to weave in three times i only did just the one normally i would trim this but I'm going to see if I can thread it without trimming it. There we did. It's good. All right. Weave in that. And so I don't tie knots on the back just because I don't like my thread getting caught on the knots, basically. And, and the result of that, of not having knots, is my backs are a whole lot cleaner. So I just weave in these ends instead. And the nice thing about weaving it in a few times is I can trim right uh, close to the edge. Throw it our way a little garbage our little strawberry uh and all right here's where we got tonight i think he's looking so freaking sweet uh all right so here's and then this is what i'm talking about with the quilt as you go 
So here's some that we have done already. They're like fully quilted. Uh, so we already have the back fabric and the batting and um, the front. And we're going to actually cut these down and then sew them uh, with a little like binding piece basically to each other. So this one, this is our little giraffe. Oh, that's right. We did the little uh, turkey work tail on him. I forgot about that. Uh, but oh, and here's a whipped back stitch. So we did a whipped back stitch for the letter G. G's here. Um, but yeah, so this one we have to quilt yet. And then we have the F. Oh, that's right. We did the little flowers. Man, it feels like I haven't looked at these in ages. But I, I do like this little quilting with the swirls and the... Oh, that we did the four leaf clovers. That's right. And then this guy, we did the little itty bitty flowers. Our elephant. Dog. The cat. This is a design I need to practice for sure. And... Uh, Oh yeah, we colored him in with colored pencils beforehand. That was fun. And our A for alligator. And then I think I just have like a practice piece in here. Yeah. So, all right. That is what the plan is for, for this guy as well. Uh, but we need to finish him first. And I think, you know, like I said, I don't think we're even going to finish him tomorrow because I wasn't here on Monday. And uh, so we'll, we'll finish the jellyfish next week. We'll stitch him next week. And I think he won't take the whole time. So then we'll finish this up, and if we still have time, then we will, uh, we will um, go in and quilt. Go ahead and try and quilt them right away. So all right, so that is the plan for next week, um, and for for the rest of this week, and then we get to stitch the the uh, lilac. I'm so excited for this, you guys. I, I said last night too that our lilacs, uh, they're all brown already. Like there's not even a hint of. Uh, a pretty lilac anymore. They just all went away when we were gone, which was a huge bummer. Uh, I was hoping to pick a bunch, but it was raining, so I couldn't pick a bunch beforehand. So anyway, it's always like that every year. They're here and then they're just gone, but it does smell like lilacs outside yet. So when I open the door, or had the window open, I still get a sense of that lilac. So I'm, I'm happy about that. <laughs> But all right, everyone, uh, thanks again. Oh, can we go, Barbara says, can we go back and watch? I need to finish organizing my quilt room. Oh, definitely. So our, all of our lives are saved on YouTube. I think you can actually see them on Facebook as well. But on YouTube, I'm Penguin and Fish on YouTube. Uh, I will have, there's a whole section of this ABC stitch along. So you can definitely go watch all of the videos again if you if you like. And then that's nice because you can fast forward and, um, all that through, through all my yammering, <laughs> uh, but awesome. So yeah. All right. So I will see you guys tomorrow again at 8 30 PM central time. It was awesome hanging out with you guys again. I'll let, um, I'll let the time run a little bit. I know it's, uh, it's almost nine, nine 40. I'll let it go to like nine 45. If you have stuff in our cart, um, again, it's that $15, and I will throw in that craft a happy life uh, kit with no no code necessary. So I will look at all those orders that came in during the live, and I will plop them in for you. Um, so thanks again, everyone. I uh, will see you tomorrow. Good night. I just ended the lives on Facebook.